Hello, welcome back to Art Together Online with the Worcester Art Museum. My name is Liz and I'll be leading this lesson today. Today's lesson is color, color everywhere. And we're going to be looking at color in different artworks, as well as reading The Color Monster. And we'll be doing three different color related art projects. So I'm very excited to get started. I think what we'll do is we'll get started with reading Anna Yenis's The Color Monster a pop-up book of feelings. Here we go. The Color Monster. Printed by Sterling Children's Books. This is my friend, the Color Monster. Today, he's feeling all mixed up, but he doesn't understand why. Look at you, you monster. You're a mess. You've jumbled up all of your emotions and all of your colors, too. I know you can separate your feelings and put each one in its own jar. If you'd like, I can help you. Is happiness. It shines yellow like the sun and twinkles like the stars. When you're happy, you laugh, jump, dance, and play. You want to share that feeling with everyone. This is sadness. It's gentle and blue like a rainy day. When you're sad, you might want to cry or be alone. This is anger. It breathes bright red. When you're angry, you might want to stomp and roar and shout. It's not fair. This is fear. It hides in the black shadows. When you're afraid, you'll feel tiny and helpless. Fear makes it hard to be brave. This is calm. It's as light as a green leaf floating in the wind. When you're calm, you breathe slowly and deeply. You feel at peace. All your feelings are in their places now. See? They are easier to understand when they're not all mixed together. Sadness anger, fear, calm, happiness. There's one feeling left over. What could it be? <gasps> the end. So this was a great book to read about color. I'm going to go back to one of the pages and talk about color for just a minute before we go on. So here we are 
on the page where the monster has put all of his color feelings into bottles. So we'll see that they had sadness is blue, anger is red, fear is black, calm is green, and happiness is yellow. Now happiness might have reminded the author and artist of a warm, happy summer day. And calm could have been, you know, a quiet walk through the forest. Fear could have reminded them of maybe being in the dark and not knowing what was going on. Anger could have been like a big fire. And sadness could have been like a dreary, rainy day. But you don't have to choose the exact same colors for your color feelings. You can make up your own mind. So maybe for you, happiness is more like red, or fear is more like purple, or perhaps um, sadness is more green, or maybe you wanna be green if you're feeling sick. So you can play with all of these colors and make your own color decision. We're going to talk a little bit more about color too. So first, I'm going to show you this tool that, the, that artists all over the world and throughout time have used to work with color. It's called a color wheel. So here we go. This is a basic color wheel and it has six different colors in it. You'll see that it has red, blue, and yellow. Those are the three primary colors here. I'll pull those out and put those over here. Primary. Those are the first colors. They are colors that we can't make by mixing other colors together. Now if we look over here, we'll see that we have other colors in this color wheel too. So we have our red, we have our blue, we have our yellow. In between those, we have orange, we have purple, and we have green. Now, those are what we call our secondary colors. So I'll pull those out too. I'll just put them over here. Okay, so now we can look just over here. We have our primary colors, which are the first colors. We cannot mix them um, by, we cannot make them by mixing other colors. And we have our secondary colors. These are colors that you can um, make by mixing the primary colors. If you want to know how, the color wheel gives us a clue. So what you do is you look at a secondary color. So let's look at orange, which is right here. So here we go. Here's on the color wheel. This is where we find orange. And now you look at what two colors it's between. We have red and yellow. So to make orange, you put red and yellow together. The same for green. You put yellow and blue together. And then for purple as well you put red and blue together. So those are a few different ways to look at color. The other way that we're gonna look at color is whether it is cool or warm. So I'm gonna take this color wheel and just pull it apart. Now, I have some warm colors over here and cool colors over here. The warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. The cool colors are green, blue, and purple. The warm colors remind us of warm summer days, hot fires, days at the beach. The cool colors can remind us of winter days, snowmen, ice cream, icicles. We're going to be looking at both the temperature of colors, warm and cool, and the emotions of colors like in The Color Monster, when we look at our next artworks in our art talk for the Worcester Art Museum galleries, which we'll do next. Okay, so here we are going into the Worcester Art Museum galleries. We're going to be looking at five pieces of art today, but we're going to be comparing and contrasting or seeing what's the same and what's different. So, the first two pieces that we're going to look at are portraits, which means they're artworks that feature a person. The first one that we're going to look at is Portrait of a Man, self-portrait, by Eric Heckel. The second piece that we're going to compare it to, or see what is the same, 
is Coco Eating His Soup by Pierre Auguste Renoir. Now, we're going to look at these two pieces and figure out what is the same and what is different. So, something that's the same is that they both have just one person in them. They both are fairly close to the person, like you zoomed in on them. And in both, the person is actually facing that way. What's different about them is many things. This one is a little bit more lined, a little bit rougher. This one doesn't really have any lines that are drawn out like a cartoon. It's a little bit softer. But one of the biggest differences is the color. So over here, the artist decided to use blues and greens primarily, with some other warmer colors. And over here, Renoir decided to use a lot of reds and pinks and sort of blush orange tones. So to me at least, this painting seems as though it's calm, but you know, maybe a little bit detached or doesn't want to be with other paintings or with other people. And this painting seems very inviting. Like we would be welcome to go in and sit down with Coco, maybe see what soup he's eating. So the greens and blues make it seem calm, maybe a little sad. The reds and oranges make it seem sort of happy and inviting. So we've looked at color temperature with portraits. That's not the only place that color is used for temperature in artworks. Next, we're going to be looking at three other artworks. These are all landscapes and they're all going to be done in watercolors. So let's push these portraits to the side and let's pull out our landscapes. The first one we're going to look at right up here is going to be Cottage in a Landscape. This is by Rockwell Kent. The second piece that we're going to be looking at is Autumn Robin Hood Maine. This is by William Zorak. And the third piece that we're going to be looking at is Vermont Landscape. This is by Dean Fawcett. So we're going to see up here in the Cottage in a Landscape piece that most of the colors are warm. It reminds me of a summer day, very inviting. Uh, maybe it would be a good day to go take a walk by that cottage and through the hills. On the other side of me, over here in the Vermont Landscape, with those gray clouds and all of those blues and sort of cool greens. It seems a little bit chilly. I might want to stay inside on this day. It seems like more of a late fall, not a very welcoming, but very beautiful landscape. Now over here, we have a really cool piece. So this piece, Autumn, Robin Hood Maine, has both in it. So I'm just going to sort of pull this, put it right here. So what we're going to do is we have warm and cool in this painting. So can you figure out which side is warmer? What about the cooler side? Yeah. So it seems as though here that the warmer side is so nice and bright and sunny, even though it's sort of fall looking, I would want to be out and sitting right in that sunshine with those trees near that lake. Now, on the cooler side, I'm not so sure I'd want to be sitting in the shade. It might be a little too cold. But with the artist using both the warm and the cool, it makes a beautiful landscape. So, I'm going to put these all back there. Shall I pull out all of the artworks that we've been looking at? I think I will. So we'll just sort of put them all up here, a little bit of a rainbow of artworks. We've looked at two portraits and three landscapes. So what we've been doing today is looking at color in art. Now what you're going to get to do is practice your own art using color. Let's get to it.
All right, so our first assignment is color my feelings. You're not going to see me do this one, but you can see examples here right on your screen. In their packet, I have provided an outline of a person. And what I want you to do is sit down, think about how you're feeling, and then color in this person uh, with the colors that you're feeling. So you can see in my example that I have um, a bunch of different colors. For me, the blue is sort of sad or tired. So my feet are sad because I can't walk as many places as I could before. And my eyes and nose are a little bit sad because I was feeling a little tired when I was drawing this. The green is happy and so is the yellow. The yellow is super happy. So my heart is really super happy right now. Um, I'm so glad to be able to do art with you. Now, I'm a little bit hungry, so I have some red near my belly. And then you can see on one of my hands, it's also very red. And that's because I hurt my finger just a few days ago. It's a little bit ouchy. And then the other colors, we have purple, which is, you know, just sort of, maybe I'm feeling a little lazy with my arms and my, my belly right there. And brown, just sort of, uh, I'm okay. No problems there. So feel free to print out that sheet and color it in, or you can draw your own person and color it in with your own feelings. Our second project is quite fun. We have monster puppets and bookmarks. This is inspired by the Color Monster book. I'll be showing you how to do this process. You'll be coloring the paper, and then folding it, and then adding details. So here we go. All the steps are also in the lesson plan if you wanna peek at that. You're gonna start by coloring in your paper on one side and the other if you want. Once you've colored your paper, it's time to fold it. Let's flip over our papers, and then we're gonna fold the bottom to the top, corner to corner, and we'll be creating a triangle. You wanna line these up pretty carefully and then crease them very well. At this point, make sure that the point is facing away from you. Then take your right hand corner and fold it up to that top point. You can do this on either side. So there's the right hand side going up. And then we'll do the same on the left hand side. And again, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we match it up very well and that we crease those. I'm using my finger now, but you can also use the side of a pencil or a marker or a ruler. Now you're gonna open up the folds that you just made and you'll see that there is a line right where you folded, which sort of creates a triangle. You're gonna take that top corner, only the top piece of paper and fold it down so that you're filling in that line. So the corner should go to the folded back of the triangle. Now you're gonna fold the right side back up again, open it up, and then tuck that top part right into the cup. Again, crease it. You'll do, be doing the same thing on the other side. Fold it up. Open up the cup and tuck in that tip. There we go. And that's all the folding. Now it's time to do a bit more decorating. You can add whatever you want through gluing, coloring, or adding any sort of extras that you have. details. I'm going to use markers to fill in the body area and then I'm going to use other pieces of paper that I've cut and glue those right on. I can use markers to help add some pop of detail to those too.
Don't forget to add some pop and color in the back of your legs and other add-ons too. Another fun thing to do is add some teeth through this process once again from beginning to end and show you how it can be very different when you just change a couple of things. All right, and this is our last project for today, sun and moon opposites in the sky. I'll walk you through, and then you can see me sort of quickly finish up with color, this warm versus cool color project. So first you get your paper and all your supplies together. Then the next step is to take something circular. Here I'm using a plate, and you're gonna use a pencil to trace it. Once I've done that, I can put the plate aside. I don't need it for the rest of the lesson. And I'm going to go from one corner of my paper to the other corner, and I'm gonna make a really big, unprepared squiggle. It might be that you want to change some of your squiggle afterwards too, just like mine got a little too close to one side over there. So I'm going to use my eraser and change that line. There we go. Now, once you have your circle and your line, you have to pick which side is going to be warm with the sun and which side will be cool with the moon. I'm going to have my top side be my warm sun and the bottom be my cool moon. At this point, I'm going to use my pencil, draw in some of the details, and then I'll jump right into coloring. I'm going to speed all this up. Here we go. monster of a time. Uh, so to recap, we read The Color Monster, and then we thought about our own bodies and what colors they might be feeling, and we did a body color map. Then we created some cute and awesome monster puppets or bookmarks. You can use them both in either way. And then we created a cool versus warm night versus day artwork with the sun and just like this one. So I hope you've had fun exploring color with me. I definitely had fun and I can't wait to see you in the next lesson. If you've created anything super cool that you want to share with the Worcester Art Museum, go ahead and use hashtag WhamArtTogether and we'll catch you next week. Stay creative!